everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and for the December 2019 Dye Pop PS episode, I want to play with color. Well, I always want to play with color. That's what we do here. But I want to play with color in a little more abstract way. So in November, I had patrons vote on different moods that I should try to translate into different yarn colorways. And my plan is to take these moods, these feelings, these emotions, and choose a technique that I feel fits in addition to the colors. I'm still debating, because I'm about to go pick yarn to pre-soak, I'm still debating if I want to pick different yarn bases for each of them or stick with one, but I have some ideas. Now, moods and colors that fit those moods are very subjective, like it's very personal. What colors translate to joy for me might not be joy for you. And so, you know, take things with a grain of salt, but I'm gonna try to get a little personal in here and talk a little bit of myself as Rebecca versus just the Rebecca from Chemnitz. And so, yeah, I thought that it would be fun, a nice way to get to know a little bit more about me. Um, I mean, some of this is stuff that I've talked about in live streams, so if you tune into all my live streams, you might know some of this, but in live streams, I tend to get a little personal and talk about you know, I talk about a lot of stuff, and so I thought it would just be fun to include some of that in an edited video, especially since we're talking about emotions, and whew, I have a lot of them. <laughs> the winning emotion was joy, and this is one I am so excited about. I want to create a colorway full of saturated color with an exuberant uh, dyeing technique, and I, I have a vision. We'll see if I get there. The second place emotion was calm. And I think that sort of trying to die like joy and calm at the same time is kind of fun because I'm choosing to put some of this exuberance and energy into joy, even though you could approach joy from a calm point of view. But for calm, I want smoother color transitions. And I'm thinking of softer, not less neon, less bright colorways. For third place, there are three different emotions, moods, what have you, that are sort of tied. Um, there's anticipation, love, and fatigue. And the one that I think I want to conquer today is fatigue. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and my own personal journey um, as I start dying. But let's go pick some yarn. There are so many different directions I could have gone with the yarn bases for this video. I could have gone with glitter for joy and then something non-superwash for calm to help us get that muted tone. But since I'm talking about my feelings and my emotions today, I went for stroll. This is my comfort zone. This is my comfort place. This is the yarn that I dye probably more than any other yarn. I think it's certainly the one I've bought more of than any other yarn. Stroll fingering weight yarn from Knit Picks is <laughs> my staple. It is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I always try to have some on hand. Occasionally it goes on back order, so I try to plan around that. And yeah, I keep coming back to it again and again and again. I love to knit with it and I love to dye it. I'm going to go pop on some reusable nylon zip ties and pre-soak the yarn for 20 to 30 minutes at room temperature. In my full-size 4-inch deep catering steam pan, I have 8 cups of water and a quarter cup of white vinegar. I am now going to add three skeins, three of the pre-soaked skeins of Stroll. I did squeeze out most of, not most, but a bunch of the water that was in here. And I'm sort of trying to spread them out in this pan as much as I can. We are low immersion here, where we have some yarn at and above the surface of the water and some below. So colors aren't gonna spread a ton unless I help them, which I am in a very joyful way. Here are some of my favorite Dharma Acidai colors that I plan to work into my joyful colorway. 
joy. Let's start with some true turquoise. This is a blue color that I love. And I'm coming in with the dry powder and just adding it on to the yarn. Sort of randomly, sort of all over. Not really trying to speckle. I want a deep saturated color. Now, I got some extra color on my hands. I don't have a yarn mop, so I'll just be touching the yarn. Since I am working with dye stocks, I am going to go and change my gloves, not change my gloves, rinse off my gloves and dry them in between each color. But after, oh, I don't know, like a minute, I'm going to go and just sort of tap these colors out a bit. There will still be some speckles and intensity in here, but, you know, we are going to have some washes of color as well. Cool. And the three skins aren't even really necessarily going to match. We're going for random and fun. Next, I'm coming in with just a little bit of some frozen blue. This is another one of my favorite blues. The swatch makes you think that it'll be like real subtle, but it is. I'm just curious how close it is to the turquoise. And it is pretty close. So I might not even come back to it. But man, I think that this is one is gonna be one of the oh yeah, frozen and turquoise are really close. It's definitely gonna be one of the first colors that I picked. Um, that I use that for Zara. Next, I'm going to come in with a little bit of some deep magenta, starting and over the blue, especially giving some speckles. I don't necessarily want a ton of pink, but I'm not going to be mad at some pops of it. Oh, that was a bigger pop than maybe I intended, and I am getting that dye off of my fingers in this one region. I have not tapped out the rest of this pink yet. Um, I may eventually, but for now, let's go in to some electric violet. And I'm starting off focusing on the areas that are a bit more white. And I don't really want to overdo it. Yeah, I do. I totally want to overdo it. This is my joy. And my joy is going big with my colors, especially with purples. I won't be mad if there's some white behind, but I want the color to feel happy. And now, getting that excess color off of my fingers. Did I already say I'm wearing my mask, safety glasses, and gloves right now? I pulled the Intense Iris, which is more blue than the electric violet just in case I wanted it later. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to want it. But I'm now coming through and you can see that we've got pastel areas and we've got fairly shallow color penetration. So I will be layering more and more color on as time goes on. And the pan is fairly crowded. Um, oh man, this color penetration is shallow. I'm not even really going to wait. Let's flip this. Oh dear. And it's sort of stuck on that other skin. You can see that with the higher acid that I put in here, a quarter cup of acid is high for what I normally do. Um, 
with that amount of acid in here already, that means that the colors are striking fast. Um, and we're not seeing as much go through to these bottom layers. I mean, that blue is probably spreading the most. And so there's a few things that you could do depending on, of course, what kind of colors you want to achieve. You could add more water volume, um, which will reduce the total acidity, or you can keep carrying on because what we're getting here is beautiful. So I'm now gonna speed things up and talk about my joy as I dye the rest of this. Right now, I think, certainly we're gonna dye this side right here, and then we might, yeah, be going inside the skeins and dyeing some more in there as well. But yeah, you'll see all the flips I do to get the level of color that I want in this yarn. Let's talk about joy. Joy for me are bright, happy colors. And my favorite color in the world is purple. I also love like turquoise and bright blue, but I wanted to sort of augment this purple with pink and blue to support it and to sort of give a nice foundation to my joy in the color purple. For me, joy is dancing exuberantly at a wedding with my husband which we love to do. We love to take on that dance floor. Uh, joy is my children, making them laugh and capturing that in a moment in a photograph that sort of embodies the way I feel about their love for life. Um, I love taking pictures. It's one of my other passions besides yarn and dyeing. And so those moments when like I blink and I want to save something forever. If I'm able to capture something that evokes that feeling, brings me so much joy. Joy is chasing Indy around in the backyard and not because he's barking at someone, but just to play and those zoomies and watching him be so excited to roll around in the snow. Joy is slipping into bed on fresh, clean sheets and just sort of wiggling my toes down at that feeling. Ah, oh, that's one of my like simple little pleasures, but it's something that makes me so happy. Joy is watching my children experience the world and giving them experiences and watching their faces light up with delight. I mean, I enjoy a lot of these experiences too, and I'm sure my face lights up with delight as well. But like when we, for example, were at Legoland recently watching these kids just grin as we go on rides and grin as we see all these huge Lego creations brings me back to the way that your emotions are so much simpler when you're a child. But anyway, that is sort of what I'm evoking through these colors here today. Okay, that took me about, I would say about 15 minutes to do, and we've got some jewel tones. This is Rebecca. <laughs> this is my kind of joy. Now, the colors are feeling a little bit deep, but I like jewel tones, and don't forget that things always feel deeper when they are wet then once they dry. Sometimes I'll be like, ooh, maybe I should have stopped. Maybe I went too far. And then like the yarn comes out and I'm like, ooh, I could have gone farther. But I love this. I love these layers. I know when it comes out of the pan that there will be some speckles and tones in here. Um, I did go ahead and add an additional, oh dear, oh well four cups of water at some point, but you can see a lot of the color has absorbed already. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch more water to here and more acid and let it sit for uh, 20 minutes. Here's another eight cups of water and approximately another quarter cup of white vinegar um, and I'm going to try to heat up a bit just till we start seeing some movement and moving all this yarn around making sure that we have everything 
so like all any powders or clumps can dissolve here now. All right, let's see. That's looking really good. Now I am going to remove this yarn, set it aside to cool so we can wash it. For calm, I want to go tonal. And I want to do a bluish gray kind of color. In this pan I have eight cups of water, no acid, and let's see, I'm gonna start with, whoop. say there's probably around three tablespoons of dye left in this 1% stock solution of Twilight Gray. And I am going to rinse it out with some water. And maybe it got a little soap in there, I'm not going to worry. And we are going to stir things up. Okay, and I also want to add some Jacquard Brilliant Blue. One, two, three. And then I'm going to stir everything up and we'll come and take a peek of the color. Okay, let's see. We've got this beautiful sort of, oh, you can't even really see. It's a nice dusty blue kind of color. The dye bath is cool and there's no acid in here right now. Um, I squeezed out a lot of water from the pre-soak of our 200 grams of yarn. And I am going to add this into the dye bath. And I'm doing this to start off with sort of like an evenness of the color so we can create something calm. But I do want there to be dimension in here as well. Um, and so once we absorb this color, then I'm gonna layer on, I think some gray to just add more dimension to it. Um, but this is a really like pretty, very neutral kind of blue. I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes before we come back to add acid and start heating things up. Okay, I'm now going to turn on the heat. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of white vinegar. And we are gonna carefully stir things up. This is a really, really beautiful, right now more than tonal, this is really semi-solid. Slowly heating up, stirring every once in a while. This color um, is definitely not like gonna be a pure solid, but it is very semi on the solid category. And a lot of the color has absorbed already. Now that we are heating up, let's add some dimension. I filled this cup of water with water, non-measured, and added one tablespoon of, oh, it's a 2% stock solution of Dharma Trading Company Silver Gray. And I'm pouring it and moving it. So pour and move. The move is to spread it out, but this is gonna give us some small depth. And the reason why I'm going with this cup here, instead of say, going for, um, the reason why I'm using this cup instead of using a squeeze bottle, is I want the volume to be a little more random than I add a little more random and a little larger. So that way they can be spread out. Um, and this is just a breath, but gives like a little bit of variation because as you are relaxing and feeling that calm serenity, um, yeah, I, I like it. I still have a tiny bit left, but I'm gonna wait 
um, wait a little bit, maybe like five minutes or so. I mean, I think that this color has basically struck, but I am going to want to flip this and add some of this color to the other side as well. After I flipped, I made another cup of the color. Um, again, one tablespoon of our 2% stock solution in that full volume of water and added it all over this yarn to create this subtle tonal colorway. Calming. For me, I love to sort of draw like a bubble bath or maybe use like a homemade fizzy bath bomb and just relax and soak and curl up with frequently a book that I'd read before so it's familiar and I'm not feeling anxiety about the characters or anything like that. Calm is long walks with no purpose. Or there's a purpose but there's no rush to get to that destination. Uh, Pre-kids, Keith and I used to love to, instead of taking the train at night, we would walk across the river back home we were in the south end of Boston and we'd walk all the way back to Harvard Square in Cambridge. It would take over an hour, but we'd just be walking and talking and we're just in no rush. And that gives like the serenity and calmness to me. And we did that recently after our work dinner of Keith's. We wouldn't have been able to walk all the way home, but we walked for over an hour in the direction of home and it was just nice and freeing because really like the only thing that we have to focus on is each other and it's just great. Calm is watching my children sleep, crawling in and snuggling up to them and just having them curl up next to me is oh, the best, the absolute best. And calm is spinning. That rhythmic pushing of the pedal and feeling the fibers go through. It doesn't take a ton of focus or attention. And so it allows you to hit that feeling of calm and just relax and ooh, it's great. <laughs> this is Calm, a dusty blue gray that is tonal. And by starting off with that cool water, we got evenness on our color before adding dimension back in. And otherwise, if I had started just adding dimension, then we would have had a lot more variability. And this gives us sort of a more even tonal that is more tones of like the blue versus gray versus light versus dark. I know it's really hard <sighs> to see through all of the steam and with the shadows and everything that adds dimension to it. But I'm going to let everything sit on low heat for 15 minutes. Um, yeah, and that's the end of calmness. Now I am going to turn off the heat and let our yarn cool off. This color is beautiful. This is the same dye bath from Joy, and it has cooled off. It's maybe lukewarm right now. Just a tiny bit of warmth, but I could comfortably touch it. For fatigue, I am going to add half of a cup of our 2% stock solution of Derma Silver Gray. So this is 118 milliliters of our 2% stock solution, which would be about approximately 2.4 grams of dye. And I am going to stir things up here in the pan. I am about to tell you a story of fatigue and what the word fatigue means to me. And shortly you will understand why. I'm going to take one of the skeins of joy and add it to this gray. Fatigue. My nemesis. Uh, I know a lot of people feel fatigue and feel exhaustion and that's something that is a common state of being for many people. And I also know, because I've talked about this in the live streams, that you guys might be aware that I have chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, over, <laughs> over a decade ago, I got a cold and never really recovered. And after a lot of different tests to exclude 
pretty much everything you could exclude, you know, I was left with this diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome. I had sleep studies that showed I was excessively tired. I did have one blood test that showed I had mono at some point, but that was already, I think, six months into diagnosing, so we're not sure if that was something I had at the beginning. And that has been with me and really changed the course and the trajectory of my life. When I was in grad school, I wanted to be a professor at a liberal arts college. I think my dream jobs would have either been being a professor at, say, Wellesley, like where I went, or teaching at a private high school and getting kids really excited about chemistry and about science. Basically, I was inspired by my professors and high school teachers, and that's who I wanted to be. So my plans after grad school were to try to find a a postdoc program that was heavy in teaching. There are some teaching postdocs available. A lot of PhD and postdoctoral work is focused on the research after that, because when you go on and be a professor, you run a research program. But I wanted my focus to be on teaching, and I wanted to figure out the best way for me to get there. But I got sick in the middle of my degree, and I'm thankful for my PhD advisor. You know, he and my department worked with me to have that flexibility so I could work fewer hours and allow me to take the time to finish my dissertation instead of going on medical leave. And I am eternally grateful and thankful that I had a very productive beginning of my PhD career and had some awesome data. If I didn't have that data, then I wouldn't have been able to go on and start writing. That's a decade ago. What about now? Now, fatigue is still very much a part of my day. And I honestly frequently feel like I'm walking in a cloud. I'm walking in this fog and it's very hard for me to see and I get really overwhelmed by decision making really, really easily. And the thing that has honestly been my savior was chemnitz. I could knit still because you only think about the next stitch. You don't have to plan super far ahead. And I could stop when I needed to. And my doctors were very glad that I had chem knits. And she said, I will be really worried once you stop knitting. Um, because, you know, it was something that showed I still had a passion and still something that I was interested in and still something that I could accomplish. And having those blog posts and making projects made me feel accomplished and when everything else was feeling like nothing was getting done something was getting done and so it helped a bit with like the anxiety and depression that came on from having my life and my abilities just changed eventually i got used to the new me and now i honestly have some pretty good coping skills for dealing with the sleep deprivation of young parenthood and so some of those things so at times are hard and really difficult but then other hand is not and I've been able to persevere and come through it and so I'm very very grateful for that don't get me wrong there are times when I can't do anything so my life is about balance and not pushing too hard because anytime I go and I start pushing too hard then I struggle um, and then I pay for it later. Spoon theory, right? I got a limited number of spoons. But anyway, this is, I guess, a big part of my journey. And if you've ever wondered why I have a PhD and I'm dying yarn on YouTube, this is one of the reasons why. But to bring things sort of full circle, here I am teaching. This is not the way I thought that I was going to be doing it. I'm not standing in front of a lecture hall teaching students in school, but I am teaching just on YouTube. And so in that respect, some of my dreams have come true. <laughs> uh, but now like I will say that like the biggest thing and the most difficult challenge for me was accepting myself at my new normal and to stop waiting to just get better and instead be thankful that I'm not continuing to get worse. Like it could be worse, but I am in this place and I have these limitations I'm aware of. And so, 
yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited that I feel like I have this future that is bright and I'm a mom and I have a business and there are all these things that I've been able to do despite having limited spoons. And so I just have to keep that in mind as I plan further projects because sometimes I take on a little more than I can chew. But yeah, that is, I guess in the deepest, deepest way, fatigue. That's why I picked fatigue when it was tied for third because I, it's so much a part of me that I just needed to share that. My story of fatigue, I recorded before I started dyeing this yarn, but I knew at the beginning of the day, I wanted to take my joy, my bright, happy purple color and put a veil over it, put that fog over it. But the joy is still here. It's just, you know, a little harder to see at places, but in some places you can still see those bright colors shining through. And so, yeah, this is a, quite the personal little journey to me here. But anyway, I just turned on the heat um, and I am going to slowly heat this up over, um, I think, 20 minutes. One of the reasons why after I put it in I just moved it back and forth is that the yarn had acid in it, the dye bath had acid in it, and I wanted to get sort of an even coating over the yarn. I could have done some resist and had parts peek through, but for this veil, this dampening weight that I feel sometimes, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to do. Maybe if I'd used a yarn with a tighter twist, an actual glaze might have been a really good way to go with fatigue over this. But I like this layer and this over dyeing, and actually I really like this color. Um, so I will move it in here periodically as we are heating up. When I was starting off to do this color, I was a little concerned that like the amount of gray that I would add wouldn't really translate, but I think that it did. I really think that it did. There's a tiny bit of color left, but I'm going to turn off the heat completely and let the yarn cool off here in the pan. Let's wash my joy. My purple, purple, blue, and pink yarn that we created low immersion with acid dye. So far, just that first run to not see anything, the, the dye did exhaust completely, but there could conceivably still be some dye on like the zip ties or something. Um, I have some dish soap here on my hands. And I'm actually going to increase the temperature of the water a little bit because the cold, it's getting to that time of year where cold is cold. But I am really, really happy with how this yarn came out. And maybe I'm seeing a hint of some bleeding. Uh, that can happen with some blues. But we'll see how, if it gets worse or if it stays at that low level. This is extremely, extremely saturated. Um, okay, yeah, that's looking fine. I am going to rinse with a handful of water, put the yarn through the skin dryer, and then I guess we'll wash the rest of the yarn. Next, let's wash fatigue, which is beautiful and deep. And <laughs> funny because I find the washing stage to be the most fatiguing, haha, <laughs> of all of the dying steps. But, oof. you know, fatigue isn't always a good thing, but this color is beautiful and is also very, very unique. Now, why did I choose gray instead of black? Uh, I knew that with black there was a chance I could go too heavy and that we would, wouldn't be able to see that peak of color underneath. 
And so I wanted a color where we had a shot of seeing that joy peek through. And I am seeing some bleeding here. But again, not super horrible, just thinking to do some rinsing. Um, if the bleeding gets bad, you can always add some vinegar to your water or even repeat. But you know, that is not bad. And I am actually not using cool water. Cool water. I'm using slightly warm water right now because my hands are getting cold. But I mean that's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to rinse this some more times and then skin tire and hanging to dry. Yada yada yada. Finally, we have Calm, which is this soft blue and gray tonal yarn. The tonal patches are random, and so it'll be really fun, but the tones in here, it's so subtle that it almost looks like shadows. So like some water on a brook that's moving super, super slow. Do soft and muted colors with intent. Uh, I tend to go for loud things, but it's sort of refreshing to do something that is just medium. It is very in denim category, and I use what a combination of silver gray, um, jacquard, brilliant blue, and some twilight gray from Dharma, and almost pretty close to equal parts of each. I think there's a privilege of about four tablespoons of a 1% soft solution of silver gray, because it was two of a 2%, so four of a 1%, three of the brilliant blue, and then three-ish of the twilight gray to create this colorway. If I had done just the brilliant blue a little more dilute on its own, then it would have still had a brightness to it. But up oh, here is a zip tie that is done. I can use them many, many times, but eventually um, they lose the ability to sort of like, oh, did I just, maybe I just fixed it. <laughs> uh, at some point, then they like lose shape and they don't stay locked anymore. And then that's the, oh, that's the point, and this is the point here where I would retire it. But otherwise, you know, I get a good, number of dyes out of each of them and I don't think I bought a pack of a hundred like over a year ago and I haven't replaced it yet. Anyway, spin dryer time. Here is all of the yarn I created in this video using abstract color inspirations. I dyed joy, calm, and then fatigue in colorways that are very personal to me. As I stated at the beginning of the video, I think that if some of you were to look at these yarns and then apply an emotion to them, you might come up with different abstract things like maybe happiness or sadness or moody. You know, there's different things that you might see looking at the same yarn, which is why this whole thing is so personal. I'm going to give you guys a closer look to all three of these skeins, but first I want to take an opportunity to thank all of the Chemnitz patrons including Karen Siegel and the rest of the Fiber Patrons. You'll see some of their names crossing the screen right now. Thank you so much for helping support the content that I produce here on the channel. If you want to learn more about the Chemnitz Patreon, you can find a link in the video description and iCard. Patrons get early access to a new dyeing video every month, some behind the scenes sneak peeks, um, advance notice of Etsy shop restocks, and more. Um, again, all of the details are on the Chemnitz Patreon page. Joy. This predominantly purple and blue yarn has some bright fuchsia specks and pops of color on it. These non-repeating, randomly dyed colorways use one of my favorite dyeing techniques because honestly, I find it joyful to just randomly pop, toss some dye powder on yarn and see what we create. And I picked my favorite colors. I had a lot of fun going through and pulling photos uh, of my family to just include while I was talking about joy. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that little look. 
into my family. Um, but if you follow me on Instagram, I often will post pictures of the kids and whatnot as well. As we go into talking about calm, can I just say that it matches my blue jeans pretty well? <laughs> For calm, I created this tonal yarn that is a deep blue gray. There are a few hints of almost yellow in here. Um, I think that probably came from the twilight gray, which has a bit of a yellow finish at times. Um, but everything is so, so subtle and soft here in this yarn, just like a calm day. And a calm yarn like this will have interest and depth and definition when you're knitting with it but it will also hold up to a lot of complex stitch patterns. Finally, we have fatigue, and I found this to be really cathartic to film. Um, it felt good to, while I was thinking and talking about my chronic fatigue syndrome journey, to take some of my joy and put a veil on it. The differences are striking but you still feel this character here. You can still feel the magenta, the blue, the purple, the speckles in this yarn. It's just darker and moodier and a little harder to make out some of the differences and subtle changes in there. And honestly, that reflects my fatigue journey so well. There's definitely, you can still see some of those speckles in there. But I like that through this veil, you still feel that happiness and joy in the yarn. I will, at least I think, be adding joy and fatigue to the Kemet's Creations Etsy shop. Um, but if they remain there for a while, they're definitely candidates for me to snag back. I mean, I honestly don't know which one I'd want to knit with more. Like, I love these brights. It's my joy. and. Even without the like meaning behind fatigue here, oof, these colors are something that I would pick in a heartbeat uh, if I went to say a yarn expo or something like that. That's, both of these are things that I would just sort of be drawn to and want to put into my stash. Today's video reminds me that I need to play around more with glazing and over dyeing. This yarn definitely I wouldn't call it glazed because that gray penetrates really deeply into the fiber. But that adding this sort of veil onto other colorways is a really fun way to tone down a more wild yarn. And so that's something that you should consider if you ever have a yarn that you're like, ooh, this is a little loud for me. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. Um, the Dipop PS series comes out once a month and I release a new video as soon as I have shared the new one with the comments patrons. But I share otherwise two new videos every week, Tuesday and Friday mornings, and we have a lot of fun. As we take our final look at joy, calm, and fatigue, let me know in the comments what colors you would pick and techniques you would use to create a colorway based on these abstract concepts. Um, or better yet, uh, dye the yarn and share the pictures with me on Instagram. Um, I'm just at Chemnitz on Instagram. Really easy to find me <laughs> over there. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.